What's good? YouTube, Steph here, and welcome to Theta Space. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first album by Japanese prog fusion group Kenso. So as I mentioned in the album ranking video, Kenso formed in the 70s and they were writing and jamming until guitarist Yoshihisa Shimizu disbanded the group uh, to finish medical school. They got back together in 1980 to record their first album. The group in 1980 was led by Yoshihisa Shimizu on guitar and keyboards with uh, Masayuki Tanaka on bass and keyboards, Shiro Yajima on flute, and Haruhiko Yamamoto on drums and percussion. They recorded this album on a four-track tape machine in 1980 and released it that same year. Uh, three of the original songs are by Shimizu and one is by Tanaka. The six tracks uh, have a total playing time of just over 41 minutes. This 1995 CD release includes six more bonus tracks, five songs from their earlier period in the 70s, and one live performance. There's an awful lot of Japanese text on the uh, record uh, packaging, as well as the track listing there, uh, the CD track listing, including the bonus tracks. This on the back is uh, apparently the uh, original back cover of the uh, LP, and a whole bunch of Japanese text in here that I can't read, and some photos of the band. Uh, so that's the uh, CD packaging and booklet. The album opens with Nihon no Mugi Uta, which translates to Folkloric Song of Japan. And especially with the flute melody, this song sounds very Japanese. I originally thought this song title was Song of Japanese Rice because the kanji that represents the adjective means uh, wheat or barley. I guess back then my brain misread it as grain and swapped in rice. But I've since been told it's folkloric song of Japan. A couple of reviewers on Prague Archives don't seem to care much for this opening track, but I like it a lot. It actually... Uh, was one of the two songs from this album that went on my Best of Kenso Mix CD. The next track is Ine no Fue, or Shadow Flute. It starts out pretty mellow, uh, mellower than the first track, and as you can probably guess, the flute is very prominent on this track. Both of the first tracks are instrumental and very proggy. The third track is Furioro Sareta Yaibe, or roughly The Blade Strikes Down. Uh, this is the one written by the bassist Masayuki Tanaka, and it's the only one to feature uh, their old lead vocalist uh, Yoshiaki Tsukahira. This song is more in the style of their old 70s uh, material. It's a driving rock tune, but still kind of proggy. It's not a bad track, but I think it would be better if it were uh, instrumental. Tsukihara is not really a bad singer, but he's not particularly good either. A side two of the LP starts with umi, which means the sea. And later live albums with track listings in English would call it that. It opens fast and intense, and it contrasts that main theme with the uh, mellower flowing section. And this is the other track from this album that I put on my mix CD. I only have a couple of Kenso's live albums, but it seems Umi is the only track from this album that ever uh, made it into later live sets. The next is Kagome, an epic track over 15 minutes long. I looked up the title to find out what it means. It refers to a children's game that involves dancing around in a circle and singing. Uh, think Ring Around the Rosies or London Bridge is Falling Down for a uh, Western comparison. One person is designated the Oni, which in folklore is a Japanese devil. And they sit in the middle blindfolded while the others dance around them singing the song. And when the song ends, they have to guess who's directly behind them. So the album track uses this song as its foundation with the band members singing the words and the melody. Kagome, kagome. So on, uh, and there's also speaking, uh, shouting, crying, in Japanese, of course, so I don't know what they're saying. There's very little music here apart from the vocal melody and some rapid little bursts of piano and uh, a few notes from the flute. Mostly it's chanting or shouting or crying, and I just don't get it. The song is a skip for me. And the last album track is Buchan no Chugairi. Buchan's Somersault, as far as I can tell. Uh, my Japanese program doesn't translate this, and so I had to Google it. It's really short. It's just over a minute and ten seconds. It's kind of like a, a coda to the preceding track. Uh, the songwriting credit for these two tracks uh, is a couple of kanji that I didn't recognize. So I looked them up, and they mean child and song, so it seems these are traditional Japanese children's songs. 
So of the uh, original 1980 releases, six tracks, I only really like the first four. Uh, but this is the 1995 CD reissue. So there are six more bonus tracks, starting with a live version of Umi recorded in 1983. This is probably the only bonus track worth listening to more than once. The rest are two track recordings from the 70s, Hisho no Tokimade and Shijun Setsu no Tabi from 1979 seem more like fragments than fully realized compositions. They're only two and three minutes long respectively and uh, both recordings fade in and out on this CD. The last three feature the same vocalist as on the 1980 album's third track, Kasu Kanaru Shido, recorded in 1977, along with uh, Haru Kanaru Toki and Tabiji, recorded in 1976. Uh, they're hard rock tunes with maybe just a little hint of progginess to them, as well as Yoshiaki Tsukahira's barely passable singing. So as a debut album, it's not bad, although I gave it the second lowest ranking. Uh, I only ranked 2000's Esseltron lower. The recording quality leaves a lot to be desired, even on the tracks that I like listening to, but to be fair, they did record this on a four track, and the bonus tracks sound even worse, except for the live Umi. They get a lot better on their second album, Kenso 2. But this album, on a 10 scale, I give it a 5. So that's my take on Kenso's first album. Any Kenso fans agree, disagree? Uh, anybody know what the screaming and crying and whatnot on Kagome is about? Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, smash like if you up. Uh, hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you would, please. They don't cost anything. Uh, I'll be back Saturday with a reaction and next Wednesday with something else. We'll see. Steph out. Peace.